I'm here with Inscription, a horror-themed deck builder from Devolver Digital. This game is incredible, it's chock full of secrets and puzzles, and I'm here to try and break down everything that you can possibly unlock within the game's free demo. The game is set up to allow you to progress across multiple runs or lives, whatever you want to call them, so we are actually completely skipping the first run. We went up, fought the Prospector, died to the Prospector, now we're back and we're here to see what all the game has to offer us because this is where things really open up and allowing you to progress whereas in your very first run a lot of stuff is gated off to you so actually if you beat the prospector in your very first run the demo will just end early and you don't get access to any of this how brutal of you you dealt me more damage than you needed to win However, in my game, such feats are rewarded, to be precise, a tooth to keep for each extra damage dealt. So now if we do overkill damage to win matches, we are able to collect additional teeth to be able to spend at different um, interaction points along this map. I forgot your figurine. Get up and fetch it for me. It's besides the safe. Okay, so we have the cabin here and the cabin is just full of secrets. Right now it seems like you cannot get to the hammer or the mace, whatever this is over here. But if you check the rule book here on the Mighty Leap uh, page, you're going to have a code 273. This is going to be different for everybody, but it will appear right here at this point in the run. The stoat, your little friend, will tell you how to be able to get to it. And uh, this is kind of crazy. There's like a um, skeletal hand. It looks like one of his hands holding the safe and his hand just moved as we approached. But if we enter in our code 273. Ah, sweet, sweet victory. We're able to access another talking card, the stink bug. Is the stoat around? Is the stunted wolf? His madness must end. Put to that away and then we also pick up a key so the unlocks just keep coming if you go over here this is where the key is valid unlocking this chest the door slides down and it reveals another puzzle so these look like board states for you and you have to be able to deal five damage if you press the bell effectively the turn plays out and it will play into the scales so but you can slide these around so this first one is just kind of telling you how to play the game there we go five of five and we unlock the skink this guy's a pretty cool card He's fine, but now he is added to the card options for the rest of your runs. And then if we go over here, this one's actually a real puzzle to be able to play out the five damage here. It looks like you have a high damage flyer here, but this is a flying blocker. So we drop these down. Then we get our flyer coming across to be able to deal the damage. And then here, this guy actually has the loose tail trait. So if he gets attacked, he will then swing to the side and act as a blocker on the other side. So we don't want to attack him at all. We drop this down and we drop this down and then we'll deal five damage across. This gives us access to the ant cards. Formidable creatures, those ants. So their damage changes based on how many other ants there are. You can extinguish this candle. I believe later on this will actually give you a smoke card, but we'll show that off later on, hopefully. We have this little squirrel with the knife. Right now, people are not able to uh, access this. It doesn't seem to be able to be broken into. But what we want to get is our figurine. We get this little guy. And now we have the portrait here, or the, the picture, whatever you want to call it. This is another puzzle aspect here. So if you are able to place cards in this configuration, regardless of any other of these spaces. So if on our board we have a beehive and a squirrel and it doesn't matter what any of the other positions are, then this will unlock an upgrade for us. And there are three tiers of upgrades that you can unlock here. They're your very first time. This is just a blank wall. So it starts here on the second. We're gonna see if we manage to do this. I found that these are kind of tricky to be able to get beehive and squirrel. So we're gonna have to actually get a beehive, which is just completely up to chance. Hopefully we do. Hopefully we get it, get to show those off because they seem pretty darn sweet. Then over here we have the clock. I'll try interacting with that in a second, but first we need to put down our figurine. New cards for the deck. We have the coyote, the rattler, and the cockroach. 
I like going for the cockroach here. These are always the same throughout uh, when you start your second run. They're all gonna have the bone cost and that's what the mechanic that they are trying to show you. You know, you're free to get up. So in your very first run, you're kind of locked to the table. But here he says that you can get up and explore the room whenever he has the map out. So whenever you're in between encounters. So now let's go over to the clock. And if you set this to 11 o'clock, moving these around and then flip the hour hand over, you get a ring ring off of the uh, little bird and does it fit? So now you actually put the ring on your hand because indeed it does fit. I'm trying to remember beehive and squirrel. Okay, let's go. The rock can get you out of a hard place. The black goat and the pliers. Man, I don't like any of these cards. We'll take the black goat, I guess. And then we get uh, more bones and another goat. I'll take the bones. Not super happy with any of those items, but it is what it is. <laughs> hey, these guys know each other. <laughs> uh, so this guy is referring to if you draw him, uh, he will go ahead and tell you that that code is written in the rule book. We jumped to the gun there just so that we would have more time playing with these new cards. And so there's a third third talking card that they reference here. Um, unfortunately, to be able to unlock him within the demo requires uh, game file manipulation. So I have a feeling that that's really just supposed to be blocked out until we get the game's full release. So I'm not gonna be showing that off. If you're interested, you can find how to do it on the Steam forums. All right, we're gonna toss Squirrel down here, sacrifice Squirrel to play Stoat, and then we have two bones to be able to play Stinkbug, and there you see we have the ring on our finger. So the added mechanic of the bones here on round two is that when your creatures die, you get a bone in your bone pile, and that it works as an additional currency to blood. And it is permanent, it stays with you, whereas blood um, is lost even in between creatures on the same turn. Hey, we even got a little bit of over damage there. Love to see it get up to go to another draft. And so at this point, our paths are going to be randomized between runs. So when you're playing this, it will look different uh, than me. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man, I kind of want to see the Mantis because I've never gotten to play with him before, but he will attack cards to either side rather than directly forward. But this death card, guys, I got incredibly lucky creating our death card at the end of the first run. So it's a two cost, two six, that'll flip over into a three eight and <laughs> and has poison. Yes, yeah, so we take Teddy here. We're full up on items, so we're gonna jump up to the campfire to be able to enhance one of our other cards. Who do we want to be better? Usually I like putting these enhancements on the really cheap cards. The cockroach also has an argument going for it because making it a 2-1 that will then keep on returning is pretty solid, but even better is if we can find a place where we can put the soul of the cockroach into somebody else, so somebody else can get undying, and then we can make like um, our little friend here, the stink bug, a little bit stronger. We're gonna go for the totem battle here because I prefer looking ahead, being able to draft specific cards rather than just drafting off of their cost, which is what that icon indicated, is he would basically give you, you can either pick a specific blood cost or a bone cost, and then you get a random card of that um, currency. And it's really, really random and often really useless. All right, we drew our ant suite, which is pretty awesome. So the ants, their attack power is equal to how many ants you have on the field together. And when you play the queen, you get another worker ant in hand. So we're gonna try and build up to be able to show off some of the ants. Put the, put the stoat across, be able to block these flying canines. Oh, they're just flying blockers. Okay, well, that's kind of underwhelming. What do we got here? The alpha. Ooh, that alpha is crazy because he can actually give the boulder an attack and the boulder will attack us. <laughs> All right, sorry, Mr. Stoat. I want to be able to show off the ant queen. To sacrifice to be able to play the queen. He needs to be able to block the boulder. That gives us worker ant in hand. And we'll ring the bell. Ah, but we did lose that ant. Well, we can get another.
Man, I wanted something with bone cost, but as it is... <laughs> no, Teddy's not worth it. There we go. We'll just ring. Still pick up a bunch of over damage. I don't know if we're going to be able to see a trapper just yet, or if they come in round three and past. Last time on my round twos, I uh, never saw one. Kaminsky? What is this? This looks like a bone card. Or it looks like a death card. I've never seen this, guys. I've never seen a randomized death card. Kaminsky, a 0-1 guardian with sharp quills and a single bone cost. Well, I'm gonna take that. It seems like a good card and just the, the oddity of finding something like that. All right, Kaminsky, you're you're up on fire. There we go. He got stronger. Later on, that event will allow you to push your luck to be able to add more damage to the card, but at the risk of the survivors eating your creature. And so you just have to kind of roll the dice on how much of an augment you want. It's me. It's strange. Why can't I remember his name? I believe I lost some of my memory in the flash. Very ominous given that he takes such a bright picture of you and then the death screen is just like a whiteout from the flash. Maybe his name is Kaminsky. Is that it? Is that his name? Right here, this man? I wonder if I play this card if he's gonna react in some way. Nope, no reaction from him. There we go. Kaminsky moves across for the block because that was one of his traits. And then because he had quills, he actually manages to finish off that coyote for us. Very helpful of him. Okay, now we want to be able to play down Teddy, our our key card, our marquee card. This is our franchise player, guys. Teddy going down. Put the stink bug across. Teddy flips into the 3-8. <laughs> this card is so overpowered. I love it. <gasps> we got the beehive. That's what we needed. Because making sure I refresh my memory. Beehive and squirrel. Oh, yes, there's a chance. There is a chance. My boss battles are high stakes, tests of your aptitude. With one flame, you will either overcome them or die. Fear not, I will let you keep the smoke. Smoke card gets added to our hand. And we begin the boss battle, fighting up against the prospector. Towards the prospector, yee-haw! Oh man, we got our, we got our big boys. And we got the smoke. Okay, so the smoke has the bone king keyword here. That means when it dies, instead of producing one bone, it will produce four incredible for being able to fund our uh, boneyard projects. I think that here, developing Teddy early would be a good way to be able to progress, but we uh, want to throw this battle because then we will get to progress again. Man, I wish that I had a squirrel banked up here. Basically, our goal with this battle is to be able to... No, wait. If I solve the picture puzzle here on the last battle, I won't be able to collect the reward, I don't think. Yeah, so we're just gonna throw this battle. Okay, here we will be able to reach the uh, game condition that it wanted to see. We can sacrifice the bullfrog, play the beehive, and play the squirrel. And then you get this like uh, this slight chime, and the board shakes, and that means that you've unlocked the uh, picture. But you can't get up in the middle of an encounter, so I don't believe we're going to be able to pick up the reward of opening the picture. And I don't think it'll be there waiting for us either. More good for me, and we're going on to round three. Why 
Where did I put that camera of mine? Hmm. I can't look around any longer. Yeah, it's only these two shots. Okay. Now it won't take. You have any idea what that camera is capable of? Give me that. We have a memento to create. I accidentally clicked right over it, but there's a line of dialogue that it says you're you're foolish to think that I would leave film in it. So like the film is the power that it uses to either kill us or wipe our memory or whatever he's doing to us. We'll take the cost of the worker ant. We will take the stat line of the wolf. Ooh, and we get the loose tail. <laughs> we still have the rule book in here. <laughs> uh, that's great. This is our second death card. Another challenger. Did I tell you the tale of the one who came before you? They fell to the mad prospector. Nothing comes between that man and his gold. It seems the lowly stink bug has made its way in. Yes, it has. And the stoat now looks really weird. <laughs> but it is dealt so it stands. So this is our opening deck. And this is kind of our default deck from now on. Okay, let's take a look around and see what has changed yet again. Oh, yes, we got it. We can pick up from the picture frame, but now... So that's how the picture frame works, is you complete the puzzle, and then you'll get this reward. So we have this potted plant. It's like a lucky clover. When we're drafting cards, it will give us multiple options now. We can use the clover to get multiple options. Unfortunately, because of the timing of when we completed it, we don't get a new puzzle yet. We would have to do another run where it will give us then a new puzzle. Uh, but you can do multiple tiers of this and they all work the exact same way. There are people who think that there's a Morse code message going on from behind the door, but that hasn't really led to anything just yet. You can give your hand at it to see how it goes. You picked up that from the oil painting. You must not like the cards that I deal you. Fine. Aha, we got the upgrade. And there it is, our little Clover, no, you may not choose a specific beast. Instead, you must now decide on a tribe that you prefer. So we can pick different classes of animals, either canine, I believe sea monster, and then woodland. The uh, elk can be pretty good. So can the canines. I don't really like the sea creatures. Yeah, we get the flighty elk. It moves after attacking, but it has a solid stat line for uh, two cost. An ancient woman emerged from behind an oak tree. She carefully laid out intricate wood carvings and gestured at them briskly. Choose. So here we get to begin to build our first totem. We can get Flying Blocker, King of King of Bones, Bone King, or we can get Bees Within. So if a, uh, whenever a card with this sigil is hit, we get a bee in hand, and a bee is effectively a squirrel that can sting. And then the Bone King would just generate tons and tons of bones. I kind of like getting the bees, because I like the uh, cards that cost blood more than cards that cost bone. It is useless without its second half. But you entuned that this would not be the last encounter with the woodcarver. And I think we see that we're going to get to meet her again right up here to be able to complete our first sigil. Uh, he hates the third talking card, but like I said, that third talking card is available from the clock if you can open the bottom compartment, but right now in the demo, being able to open it requires manipulating the game files. 
Now we get another draft. And again, so if we use the clover, we'd be able to get a new set of options. Do we want to go for birds? I'm not too high on flyers. Another wolf or someone from the insect class. Let's try and draft a wolf. There we go. So we have two wolves in the deck. Pretty vanilla card, but if we can manage to get a wood topper to our sigil, then it's gonna be feeling really good. And we hit it. There we go. Wolf sigil activated. Wolves and bees alliance. There we go with the old woman. Bared her teeth in satisfaction. Your first totem was complete. The bees within sigil will now be marked upon all of your canine creatures. Fantastic. And here we can see our deck. Okay. We have the trapper coming up next after this battle, so we want to be able to try and do... There's the bees. We want to try and do as much overkill damage as possible. Is it time to use the squirrel in a bottle? Yeah, let's start out big here and get one of these wolves down. Because he was struck with the sigil, we get a B, which is going to allow us to play here and here, and then we can get the other wolf out. And we can also play the stink bug here. <laughs> Lucky draw. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, it looks like the wolf just wins us this. He was stopped along the way by a trapper looking to liquidate his pelts. There was something uncanny about his appearance, but you were quickly distracted by his wares. Care to look at my pelts? Take a pelt free of charge. See the quality? So we get a free rabbit pelt here, and then with only two teeth, we can buy one more pelt. You're leaving already? Please consider my pelts. Thanks for your business. And now I think that this mask is the prospector mask just turned upside down. I'm not sure, but I think that's how it works. So now we can sell pelts at the trader further down the path and we'll be rewarded for them, but I have never found a trader. Oh wait, is that it? Will this be my first trader encounter? We could get yet another option for our sigil and then you can kind of mix and match, but we are a little bit low on items right now. So we can get all our creatures are airborne for a turn. I like squirrel in a bottle. And then, yeah, we'll take another one here. Hopping into battle here, we draw the rabbit pelt in our opening hand, so it can be used as a uh, blocker. It goes out free, so it's a nice little stall tactic, even though it is like kind of messing around with your deck. I still think it's useful, and it gives you bones when it's defeated, and it can be sacrificed. Well, no, it can't be sacrificed because it has a um, like an object tag. But anyway, it's still decent to have in there because of its use as a blocker and for generating bones. So we'll put the elk down here to be able to clear these coyotes and then send in the stink bug. And eh, we'll actually go over here. He's gonna be fine because he reduces the coyote's attack because he's so repulsive. Let's see what else we have. Yep, it's you again, Mr. Stoat. You're looking rougher and rougher every playthrough. But if you guys notice here, the ring is still on our finger. So you don't die in between runs. I think it's more like what the uh, stink bug was um, referencing in that he lost his memory in the flash. Now things are tipping into our favor. Something is yes, the big, big wolf. Light him up. Oh, beautiful. We're going to get a ton of overkill damage here. Okay, so we want to get as much as we can. Well, 
We're probably not gonna see the trader again, but it's still best to practice good habits. So that means that we sacrifice to be able to go up in damage, get more overkill, collect more teeth, fill the bowl. There it is, what is this? I've never seen this event before. You've encountered a small outpost in the woods tended by a mysterious woman. Hopefully she is the traitor. It was the traitor that the old trapper had mentioned. Her appearance was unsettling, but you were mollified by her offerings. Oh, there it is. That's the mask turned around. Do you mind if I examine those pelts of yours? Yep, two rabbit pelts. Let's start with your hair pelts. Here's what I can offer. I can trade you any of these. Take your time. Ah, very fun. So we get an additional draft. We have a kingfisher out here. Interesting. Flying and water. I like being able to pick up the all basically all the cards with the um, grow up mechanic. What do they call it? The fledgling mechanic. Because basically you pay less than a card is worth as long as you can keep it alive on the board for a single turn. And that's usually pretty easy to do. So it lets you get, oh, you get one for each pelt? That's even better. Yeah, turkey vulture as a big payoff to building up a lot of bones. A few final things here in the cabin for you guys to puzzle over because I'm trying to label this as going over all of the secrets here in the game. The door here to the room where he takes the picture of you, which kills you or wipes your memory, has the number four and four written here. And it's the exact same shape and orientation of one of the playing cards. And because that is the room where you build your death card, potentially building the stat line into one of your cards could be an important key for progressing later on in the game. The skull over here allows you to pick up teeth that you can then sell at the trader for pelts or at the trapper for pelts. I'm going to throw this battle with the prospector one more time to be able to see if I can come across some of the other unique cards that you can pick up just in drafting through the normal progress of the uh, little map missions. But otherwise, we have hit everything that the demo has available to it. The underappreciated ringworm. Its value is not readily apparent. There is a little bit of an easter egg that you can pull with the ringworm. This can be used to poison the survivors. You can manipulate a situation where they actually will eat the creature if you like leave it there with the fire and they will die if you feed them the ringworm. You can hit a point where the game master is going to offer you uh, his surrender early, never take it because you want to be able to win with overkill damage to be able to have extra teeth when you show up at the trapper. So uh, even though it will end the game early, uh, don't accept his surrenders. Ah, this is the event you had an idea. Why not warm your creature by the fire for just a moment longer? One of these starving survivors took a step closer. This would be risky. Push your luck or pull away. So this is where if you load up the ringworm, you can just keep on pushing your luck until they eat the ringworm and then they will all die. Uh, but as it is, we can choose if we want to push our luck to be able to continue to enhance the damage on Mr. Bullfrog. I don't mind if we lose him. Let's, let's push just a little longer. Luck was on your side, perhaps one more moment, but you sense the risk would now be even greater. Push your luck further or run back. We will run back. We're pretty happy with a 3-2 uh, bullfrog. <laughs> I mean, that's a wolf stat line. Hey, we hit it. This is one of the secret cards. Greater smoke. You achieve this when you continually extinguish the extra candle in the cabin. So now whenever you get a smoke card during a boss battle, it comes in as greater smokes rather than being a 0-1 with Bone King. It is a 1-3 with Bone King, which is, and it's free to play. This is a crazy good card. You can still sacrifice it for blood too. Like this is an amazing card. Yes, I found one. Here it is, one of the Kraken cards. How did I do that? The opponent is confused as to how this card even exists. And if you look at its mechanic here, 
it is blotted out in the rule book so you're not supposed to you know quote unquote you don't know what it does you can figure it out they all have these different pictures let's see if we swipe between them yeah so we have mirrored power so if you see this uh, mirror symbol then we'll have the same attack value of whatever is across from it you have bell ring which means it has the amount of attack power as times you have rung the bell that game when you play it so it doesn't keep on going up every time you ring the bell it just takes how many times you've rung it at the time that you play it and that's its attack power and then card counter this is going to be attack power equal to how many cards are in your hand and i believe that is it they are pretty good they get a lot of attack power pretty easily with some unique mechanics they're also usually fairly cheap um but also often pretty low health we go play the Kraken, and so there, it has two power because I have two cards in my hand. Honestly, a 2-1 for one blood, it's fine. It's fine. It's better if you could have manipulated it to have more cards in hand, but that's probably one of the weaker versions of the Kraken. Okay, well, even with all of my re-rolling clovers being used, I was not able to find yet one of the secret cards that you're able to find. So similar to the Kraken in that the opponent doesn't understand what it is there's going to be one that just appears as static like white and black checkered boxes continuing to waver and flicker and when you draw it it will just become a totally random card it's a pretty cool card to have i think all that is left for us here to do is actually beat the prospector and finish the demo hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing all of the secrets that got packed into this demo this game looks really incredible and i love the way that it has you thinking outside of the game and outside of the box to be able to solve some of the puzzles and work out what you are supposed to do and i'm sure that there is a lot more still in here that is just completely locked out of the demo we're gonna go squirrel into the Kraken to be able to get it down as a 3-1. That's a solid stat line, it really is. Greater smoke coming out here just to be able to begin chipping away and ring the bell. Ooh, its power is variable based on the cards in our hand, so it actually changes in real time. That's super interesting. Maybe the other ones do as well, though I feel like my experience says they don't. Sacrifice our upgraded, or sacrifice the squirrel to play Stoat. Stoat has the blessing of the magpie here, the hoarder trait, so he's able to search our deck to add a card to hand. We are going to add corpse maggots because they get played for free when one of our cards dies in combat, which we are expecting to happen here. Yeah, right here, the adder will attack, and then the corpse maggots gets played out for free. At this point, we are looking pretty good. It looks like the uh, flying stoat will be able to put the last damage through. So we just want to build our hand here, expecting the prospector to turn all of these into gold, and then give us a ton of bones. Unfortunately, <laughs> I had my vulture tricked out, but the... Um, the survivors around the campfire ate him. He was going to be a beautiful, beautiful card and would have been the best way to pay off all of these bones. As it is, our deck is looking a little thin on how to pay off having a lot of bones. Stinkbug will snipe the Kai out. I think we will leave it at that. There's the bullfrog coming in. Coming in big. Big fat, warmed by the fire. Now we are out of cards out of cards, we have just to pop the pack mule and we'll be able to get a big windfall of cards here. I think we actually do sacrifice the stink bug to be able to drop the wolf and snipe out the adder. So otherwise we don't have space to be able to play the squirrel. I kind of misplayed the order there. I should have been able to set up the wolf earlier before, but I put him out in the wrong order. There we go, we pop the pack mule 
And we got all of our cards. We only have squirrels left to draw, so we have worker ants, field mice, which field mice, when you play them, you get a copy of them in hand. The possum, and yeah, just tons and tons of squirrels. What's that, Mr. Prospector? The scales have tipped against you. Memory card is full. The demo is now completed. We have knocked it out. So write down in the comments if you guys have found any additional secrets or if you feel like my explanation was not perfectly clear on how you were able to get all of the different bonuses that are hidden in here in the demo. Really excited to see this game come out with its full release, which is coming up soon. Let me know in the comments also if you would like to see me playing this game once we get that full release. This trailer here for it just looks absolutely insane. The levels of like meta puzzles and whatnot that could be worked in here. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.